Young Kwon. Winners of the AFC Champions League 2020, Olsan Hoyerman. You're listening to the K-League United Podcast, proud partner of Football Nation Radio. Hello, I'm Ashby Khan. Welcome to the Cayley United Podcast, a podcast extra as well with me, Paul Neat, and Peter Hampshire. Hello, mate. How are we doing? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. Just waiting for a trip out today, hopefully. Actually, it's just snowed here in Gimje. Can't get away from it this winter. I know. It, it tried to snow yesterday, and the news said that it was supposed to be like avoid the roads because the, it'll be snow and mayhem, but mm. really bright. And I don't know. I might, I might drive to work today. It seems like it might be all right. So we'll see. But yeah, I don't know. I like snow, but not after Christmas. Just, it's just a bit of a nuisance. Yeah. It snowed on Christmas morning in Gimje. I mean, it's just the city of love is Gimje. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the tourist board on this on this podcast, but well, I, th- I think you've put the city on on the map. I don't think people knew where it was. <laughs> yeah, they should give me a commission, definitely. Well, this is a, a bit of a special episode. It's um, all about Dejan Damjanovic. Of course, he left the K League at the end of last season. He had a, a one year stint with Daegu FC. He scored nine goals, got so so close to two hundred. He's on one hundred and ninety eight, and it looks like he won't really get past. 198, unfortunately, because he has signed for Hong Kong Premier League side Kitchi, who are in the Asian Champions League. So we should see him uh, on that stage once again. But yeah, it's a bit of a shame that we won't see him in K-League this season. Yeah, especially because he wasn't just a bit part player last year. He was really effective up front for Daegu. So it's a shame. I mean, I was personally hoping he'd come down to Guangzhou, especially if more players end up leaving. Guangzhou, the Guangzhou side's just being gutted <laughs> one by one. But yeah, it's a real shame, obviously, for us because he's a friend of the show. He's great for interviews and things. And on the pitch, even though he's pushing 40s, he still had plenty to offer. He got nine goals last year. And you would think that with a full season, because obviously it was a 27-game season last year, not 38 as it should have been, he would probably have got that that extra two goals and beyond 200. But he isn't. Instead, he's focusing on getting his ACL goal record back. I think he's on 36 now. He should be 37, I think. But I don't think goals in qualification matches count. That was... He scored on his on his Blue Wings debut, actually, in a 5-1 win against Tan Hoa back in 2018. But um, at least he has that record in sight that he can claim back because obviously he has ACL to look forward to this year. But before we speak to Dan, I just wanted to just, I don't know, what, what was your first time that you, you saw him play or your first memory of, of Dan in K-League? When I moved to Korea, he was actually playing in China. So my first memory wasn't until 2017. Uh, in the super match uh, and I was watching that back in England with um, uh, some uni friends and the reason I remember that is I've got a friend called Lee Ray and then E Young Ray scored for Sue and Blue Wings and, and Dayan scored in that 2-2 draw back in 2017 um, so that's why I remember that game because I was watching it with Lee Ray and he was surprised that he was on the pitch and yeah Absolutely. obviously I knew about him as a player uh, living here for a year and then going back to England but I hadn't seen too much of him before that to be honest how about you? Well actually he um, my first game that I ever saw in K-League it was he was in it he, and he scored it was Seoul against Pohang on the opening day of 2013 and uh, I was in it was the long weekend for obviously March the 1st independent movement day in Korea and I was living in at the time I was living in Daejeon and he came up to Seoul for a long weekend first time in Seoul and I'll be honest I didn't I didn't look to see if Seoul were at home um but I bumped in some other so some friends from Daejeon they, they just happened to be in Seoul as well and we ended up going to watch the uh, K-League opener, which was obviously a great experience. And then, yeah, he scored. Wasn't the best of goals, but he scored. And I remember a friend who had been in Korea for a year at that point was like, that's Dayan. He's, um, you know, he's one of the best best players in K-League. And I was like, all right, okay. So that, that was my first memory of, of him. And um, so, um, yeah, we're going to have a little chat with him. He has returned to Asia. I believe he's in Hong Kong now and uh, going through self-isolation before he can join up with his new teammates. But uh, we thought we would have a chat, see see how it all unfolded and uh, what his thoughts are ahead of the new season. And so without further ado, here he is. Dayan, how are you? Uh, fine, thanks. Finally in Hong Kong. So now isolation period is in front of us. So I hope everything's going to be okay. And after this 21 day. For sure. Yeah, I'm sure the club has given you a fitness regime to stick to for... For the time you're in quarantine? Yeah, 
Yeah, they asked me uh, what I need for these three weeks isolation. I asked some basic things, met some weight, uh, treadmill. So it's okay. They prepare everything. Uh, everything looks really nice. So more than more than uh, enough now for this uh, first first part of isolation and running period. Good. Well, uh, we'll, we'll get more to your um, your new the new chapter in your career a bit later on. But I think I know what you're going to say. But is this goodbye to K League? <sighs> it looks like. It looks like, and uh, I didn't plan to finish like this. Uh, but what I can do, man? I was, uh, I was thinking I will stay in Korea. Honestly, that everybody knows that, and uh, even my 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 clothes and my stuff. I I left everything in Daegu. Everything was more than okay. I cannot say perfect, but I can I can say it was good. Uh, my season, club season, and I was thinking maybe I can extend one more year there and uh, finish in Korea my career. So play, it's okay. Probably it's um, bye bye for playing football in K League, but maybe after football, uh, for sure I will be back in uh, Korean football. But now, now I'm in Hong Kong. I'm neighbor, if I can say this. So what happened at Daegu? Like, I mean, how did they say to you that they weren't going to offer you a new contract? I mean, how how soon did you know? No, they were really really professional. They just said they want to go with some younger. A little bit different style of uh, attacker, and that's all. Nothing. It's not like we had some fight or we had some uh, misunderstanding. My relationship with Dego was perfect from first day to last. Not only with uh, president and uh, office, with everyone, they accept me like I was playing there five years. Not only one one season, and I have a I had really good relationship with everyone. I'm sorry that I didn't meet a lot of fans and we we couldn't celebrate on the games because of this covid and corona time but everything was perfect man i cannot complain about that just they they want to they want to go with some younger striker different different style and that's all really understandable and uh, i can understand their decision now when i'm looking back they want to try something else a little bit different it's okay that year in dego was really good and that everybody was satisfied with me because every many of them were were a little bit concerned about my situation, my my physical, a little bit doubt in my my ability, my age. But I'm I'm happy that everything worked really well, and that's okay. One really really nice experience for me in uh, in uh, in Korea. The stadium is wow. incredible as well down there, isn't it? At, at yeah, Daegu. It, like, looks fantastic I'm, facilities. I'm sorry that uh, I said I'm really sorry that I couldn't feel that atmosphere before the game, on the game, and after the game when the stadium is full. But this corona kills kills this uh, the most important thing the this atmosphere on the stadiums but it's okay i hope so this year will be better i enjoy uh, even like this playing in debut so can i i cannot even imagine if i was playing in, in front of full stadium yeah i suppose this is the difference between a professional footballer and a fan like like me because if if i was told okay we don't want you anymore i'd be like upset and I want my revenge, you know, like I suppose as a professional, you probably get used to or you probably appreciate when somebody's honest to you. Yeah, uh, generally, you know, when I, if I'm if I'm younger and something like this happened, maybe I will feel different. Maybe my reaction will be different. Like, you know, ask some questions like this. I had a really nice, like I said, really nice relationship from the first day. So I, I know this is just sport decision. They want to go with something else and uh, it's OK. I, I really understand and I get so many messages on social networks, support and uh, thank you for everything. So I know I did well and uh, I, I help them the best way, I, how I can help in my age now when I'm 39. And it's okay. Like you said, it's professional life. Uh, things change really quickly, especially in, in football. So it's okay. I, I had see. four teams in Korea and not bad. Yeah, yeah. Played in some, some excellent stadiums and with some big big football clubs, so you must be very happy with, with overall. I play always in good teams. Even uh, in Incheon when I was, that was 2007 now, far away. Incheon was okay that year. We were like 6-7 fighting for playoff with FC Seoul that year. We fight for, for a playoff and uh, after that normally FC Seoul and uh, two years in Suwon. They are all big teams. And then now Daegu will qualify for ACL. I'm happy that I was always playing for com in the competitive teams, teams who who play for something, who have quality. I always play, I say, attractive football. So I'm okay. I enjoy. It. Going back to when you when you joined Incheon, I've got a bit of a strange or random question, but I, w I was wondering how do teams in Korea decide how your name will appear in Korean? Because obviously you you're just known as Dayan, not Damjanovic. Did I they did ask you? The, the the back number and no back number back uh, back name 
how for them is easy to pronounce, not for us. So they ask, uh, they ask you, okay, your name Dayan, last name Damian, ah, oh, Dayan. <laughs> my last name. So they said, ooh, Dayan, Dayan. Ah, okay, Dayan. And for them, it's really easy to say Dayan because it's Dayan Minguk. So they yeah, yeah. In my pronunciation, and they yeah. are using like this, really. Right, I see. To, to pronounce for them, for a commentary, for a TV, for everyone. So they choose. I, if I remember well, they choose like that. Uh, they I see. Them. Okay, <clears throat> they are. I cannot pronounce my last name, so it goes like that. It was like that. Now I don't know, but it's like you're um, a brand, you know. Like there's only one Dayan. There's there's Dayan. Um, Lovren, there's all kinds of different Dayans in football, but there's only one Dayan, you know, just yeah. Dayan. Yeah, I'm Dayan Minguk. Dayan Minguk. <laughs> Dayan exactly. Asia. Yeah, it's okay. I get used he, to Dayan. In only in yeah, China. Yeah. Doyan. In China. Doyan. Doyan. Um, okay, okay. I see. Okay for them, but still, even there, I was Dayan. Always Dayan. And even in ACL as well, in in English letters, it was Dayan, not not Damianovic. I just I don't know. It's these little details that um, I, I often wonder but about. Things happen in ACL. If you can put last name and in K League, for example, if you are playing in K League, to put your name. So probably when they prepare the jerseys for all season, they are doing same. You cannot mm. change the back name. I don't know. It looks like this if you are in Kelly, you are wearing there and you must wear there in uh, ACL, just on mm. English English version. And uh, you've obviously played in the K League in China and now in Hong Kong. What what's it like working in an environment where English isn't the first language in the in the dressing room? Uh, it's not easy, but you can see by my language, my English, that it's not perfect because you always mm. need to use English, Korean, English, Chinese, that, that they can understand you easier. Uh, this is my first time I knew I will use English, you yeah. know, completely not mixing, just doing like English version from the first day when I arrived in Hong Kong, everybody was speaking English. It's unbelievable. I, I didn't get used to that, honestly. So I think now it will be much easier for communication. Not for me. I will get always some way to say what I want and ask for something. It's more for my family, my kids especially. They can uh, feel more comfortable. They can enjoy after the schools and whatever they need to do here daily. For me, it's okay. I'm so long oh, here. No, I, I cannot say anything. You know, I'm 15 years in Asia. If I didn't like it, I will never stay here so long. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's in the Kitchi squad as well. They've, they've got a Korean, so you can keep up with your Korean yeah. language. <laughs> one guy who played with me in Seoul, one guy who played mm. with me in Spawn. I'm going there. This is my home, home field. <laughs> <laughs> Coach is uh, Korean. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 I have uh, uh, you know, a couple of Korean friends. Plus, I have a few Koreans playing here in other teams. I know them really good. Some of them play uh, play with me in Seoul. So I think life can be really perfect this season for me. And uh, that's one of the really important things. If you want to per perform well on the pitch, you need to enjoy in life after the outside of the pitch. So I think here life can be perfect. And I think I can do really good things here in in, uh, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, and now obviously you're in Hong Kong, you're in, you're just starting your pre-season preparations. What, what was um, pre-season like in general in the K League? And did you notice any changes from when you arrived at Incheon in 2007 and then right through uh, to Daegu in 2020? Uh, uh, pre-seasons, they're always really strong in Korea. I must say from the, even in Incheon, 2007, I remember when I signed for Incheon, we run a lot. You know, facilities and uh, places where we training in preseason were perfect, but a lot of runnings, a lot of physicality, a lot of gym. So there I, like I said, many, many times they asked me about this. So I said, guys, I changed myself a lot. I was really lazy. I didn't like to do gym. I was always good with the ball. I was always like technician. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using my foot always to get what I want. Here, it's impossible. Sorry, there now. In Korea, it's impossible. <laughs> the foot, you need to be physically ready. You need to run a lot. So pre-season generally was always tough. Normally, there were some seasons in FC Seoul when team was perfect. So you didn't, you didn't need to kill us too much. Just prepare us lightly and then during the season we're gonna improve our physical and uh, we're gonna you know be in shape in a couple of games but man, man, this this was maybe one or two seasons everything else was really tough even in Degu last year 
two months pre-season, then they delayed the, because of Corona. So two mm-hmm. months more, we did like pre-season because we didn't know when we're going to start. Man, it was tough. It was really tough. So Korea, I must say, when you want to play in Korea, first you need to survive pre-season. You need to change your mind. You need to focus on, on yourself, on your body, because it's impossible different to, to, to you know follow the rhythm of K-League and Korean football. You mentioned FC Seoul there. Um, I'm just thinking, which manager worked you the hardest in pre-season? Was it Che Young Soo? No, honestly, uh, no. Well, when when uh, Gunesh, Senior Gunesh, when I signed for FC Seoul 2008, pre-season, <sighs> brother, we ran, <laughs> we ran a lot. And uh, 2008, 2009. Uh, I can I cannot say anything bad for 2009 because the first part he killed us, the second part we went to Antalya in Turkey. So there was perfect life, unbelievable food, the pitches. You play a game every every day. You want if, if you want to play every day, you can play game. There are like 50, 60 teams in the preseason there. So I enjoy there. But first part was unbelievably hard. We run a lot. And uh, if I remember well, 2017 with uh, Huang, what I can say about him. <laughs> we ran day and night like we never played football we were like championship team top team 2017 he bring us to Guam Guam like 30 30 degrees uh, weather unbelievable and he give us to run every day man everybody knows what I think so in my I remember pre-season and not it was stupid stupid running uh, every day we have so many pains Normally, in pre-season, is it something that you look forward to? Like, you know, the season's going to start soon, you see your teammates again, or is it like, oh, no, pre-season's coming soon? Uh, nobody likes pre-season, to be clear about <laughs> it. But yeah. now, I'm, I'm saying now, in my case, I'm now 40. This year, I will be 40. I was missing trainings. I know it's going to be hard, but I know, you know, what is that? That's like 10 or, 10 or 15 days hard, really hard. So you're going to do massage. But then after that, you're going to enjoy all season. So until I'm feeling like this, I will play football. If I start feeling like that, like, oh, man, preseason, I will quit football, man. Then it means I'm getting lazy. I'm just not feeling any more passion for football. And I think everybody is thinking the same like me, more or less, when they are younger, for sure. It's hard, but everybody wants to train. Everybody wants just want to start training. And after one week or two weeks, it's done. You're going to finish running. You're going to have this... Uh, you know, tight muscles, everything you feel really heavy. After that, when ball comes and games, you're going to be happy. And, you know, every year is like this. Not every year, every six months. In Europe, is every six months. In Korea, is once a year. But I can say summertime in Korea is like pre-season. You play eight games in one month. So you get really tired. I think everybody complain, but they are enjoying. Yeah. Their mind. I, everybody's complaining when they know in the morning, nine o'clock, you need to go out and run. But everybody happy to do that. Like uh, avoiding trainings, they are going there. They are like, mm, eh, why, why, why? But everybody's running. I suppose if you go, if you go somewhere as well, you know, it kind of helps with the team atmosphere, team building. You know, especially if there's some new signings and you all go to a preseason, yeah. a training camp somewhere, it, it must help. Yeah, sure, man. That's uh, that helps a lot. You know, team building. Uh, you know, get get know the new player. They need to. Generally, that period not only for training, but generally for uh, for uh, improving the atmosphere in the team, to see how team handles hard training, hard situation. Uh, always some stupid things happen on preseason. Somebody did some crazy things, get crazy after two weeks. So you need you need you know, how team react on this and uh, to see how how captain control the team. You know, in Korea it's very important the captain, vice captain, how they are controlling the squad. So generally, preseason is uh, when you. You know, look on the side is really good thing, and uh, it's very important if you want to do something in football generally. So it's okay. In in the the pre seasons that you've had in, in in your career, have you ever been given time like a night out? You can say, okay, boys, go out, enjoy yourselves, have a few drinks. Any any anything like that? Ah, uh, brother, you cannot get that. No, but yeah, like I said, uh, I had a really good relationship with uh, Chen Su, so he was. Uh, he was one of the uh, coaches who knows how to treat, how to. He's he's he was feeling the squad really good. He knows. I will give them a little bit. For example, today we had, we had like pizza. So he Friday two times kill us. Saturday, game, morning game or afternoon game, no problem. And no morning game. And then he said afternoon after lunch, guys, afternoon no training, 
you are free, go beach, swimming tomorrow, all days free. He told us this because he knows Saturday night we're going to try to go out a little bit. <laughs> to your in pre-season, but just, just to go after 11. To be yeah, yeah. So he knows that because he's saying like, okay, Sunday you are free, breakfast free. He's giving us everything that we, Saturday night if we want to stay until 2 a.m., no problem. Okay, you cannot go drink uh, and collapse or make some problem. That's impossible. But you can stay in room together with uh, teammates, you know, having a couple of beers or uh, you know, watching games. You know, in the morning yeah. you don't need to wake up. So he 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 was um, he he was feeling the squad. He knows we. I'm gonna kill them five days, training hard. But I know if I give them this one or two days after Monday, it's gonna be everything okay. Nobody complaining again. We are doing, and we know that. So he said like, okay, Saturday you are free. Sunday morning free, go beach, so we all day enjoy. And then Monday when you are coming back, I know he's going to kill me Monday morning. No exception. But nobody's complaining, brate. Builds a bit of trust, doesn't it? And a bit of responsibility. Yeah. But we, we're going to use this to have a really nice time one day, one day and a half. But after that, Monday, we're going to come like full focused on the game. And in the end, uh, with him, results were really good. And our squad yeah. was really good and everybody was happy. From first to last player, everybody was happy, no complaining. And the end, you see results, champions, good, good results, good transfers. Everything was perfect. So very important thing, even in preseason, that you know to to control the squad. Have you spoken to him recently? Yeah, just a couple of messages. I just asked him how he's going. Yeah, are you in Seoul then? I said no, coach. <laughs> I'm not coming Seoul this year. I will. I will come Korea when I hope so. This Corona disappear. I don't know how to say. Yeah. When they, they cancel this uh, isolation period. I want to come to Korea. I have uh, my life is in Korea and uh, my accounts and my and my friends. And first moment when everything is under control in the world, I will I will come to Korea. So do you think you'll see uh, Choi Young Soo manage again yeah. in the K League? Sure, I will text him. I will text him to see how he's going. I don't know what's happening with him. Nobody's saying anything. No no news. Not, no rumors. Probably he's enjoying in life. You know, he's really picky about this. He will not take anything. So probably he's waiting something good. National team, maybe some some uh, national team selection or maybe some big team. He will never go some small team. It doesn't look like him to go some small team or just work. He's enjoying in life. When uh, they lost 6-0 after two games and uh, he resigned after that, uh, I text him a couple of times. Normally, we exchange some messages, but I didn't see him for now almost six, seven months, eight months, even more maybe. So I wanna, I wanna see him just to you know catch up some lunch, you know, just to see what he's doing, how he's doing. He's back. He had some back issues, so I hope so he's now okay. Yeah, I look him like father, man. So if yeah. we are together, I will always have good relationship with him. Does your time at Daegu and obviously not them not renewing your contract there? Does that? And make you more determined now you've obviously moved to Hong Kong and Kitchi. Does that make you more determined to succeed in the league and the Champions League at Kitchi? Yeah, honestly, mm. I'm feeling good. Uh, I even me, even I'm saying for myself, I score I don't know how many goals and uh, I'm not living from the past, but I, I was really good. But I was concerned about my physical and my my body and my myself generally about last year. I was a little bit concerned when I didn't play, they made some really bad picture about me that I'm making problems and I'm not, I cannot play anymore. So I was a little bit concerned. But then season started in Degu. I uh, I finished pre-season without injury. I was feeling good. I start performing well. I'm sure I can do well. So now I'm really happy that I, I get one more chance in ACL. And uh, I'm really I'm really focusing now to do that with Kichi. We have a good squad for Hong Kong League normally. Uh, group stage not bad we 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 get uh, teams okay we we had luck i must say in the in this draw so everything is perfect now i'm just I'm gonna prepare well and do well in the hong kong league there are a lot of games uh wednesday sunday so i'm sure i can do well i'm you know focusing now to do that in hong kong to get some title one more if it's possible uh, in NPL, normally everybody knows my 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 goal and uh, i think i can do well I'm feeling good, I'm motivated, and that's for me more than enough. Yeah, you're chasing ACL goal records and also that yeah. Kaylee goal record as well. How did you feel about just missing out on the 200? Uh, you know, guys, 200 is just Kaylee. I scored more than almost 300 goals. Here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So 
I, I cannot be like uh, I say negative about this thing, saying hey, I'm missing this. I'm missing, but well, guys, how, how many goals I scored? I cannot now focusing that I didn't score two because two hundred looks really nice. Yeah. You never know. Maybe mm. I will come back Korea next year. Maybe somebody will say, they and come to help us one season and I will be back. You never know. Maybe I will score now 20 goals in Hong Kong League. Maybe I will do well in ACL and somebody... You never know. I was never mm. planning to go out from Korea. I was mm. never go out from FC Seoul. But look what's happened. So in um, in life of football players, professional sports, sport people, generally you cannot organize your life. You cannot think in advance too much. So... Now I'm focusing on this. I enjoy what I did uh, in uh, Korean football, but now I'm not regret about anything. You mentioned there about not wanting to leave FC Seoul. I think when you, when you came back, was it a two-year contract that you yeah, signed? Two-year contract, but you know, I, I said, guys, that's two years because they were, con- you know, again, concerned about my age. I was that time 35. They were thinking, mm, can they undo that? They showed them that, that I can do that. You know, really good for myself. I say personally, and my if I'm looking on my goals and my my performances, everybody knows what's happened there. So you know, but I, I came back to finish football in in Seoul mm. from China, and I didn't finish. Even I scored 40 goals in two seasons, I didn't stay in yeah. Seoul. Imagine this. So I'm not planning anything. I'm not regretting anything. I'm just enjoying in this moment to enjoy with my family, to enjoy my myself on the pitch, to try to do well, to score some goals, and then we're gonna see. Maybe after four months I will go home. Maybe two years more I will play. Man, Ibrahimovic scoring goals in Italy, man. I can do here. Don't worry, guys. Yeah. Really? I think actually, I, I think in um, a, pre- a, a a season preview article that I wrote years ago, I think I, I described you as the Kaylee Ibrahimovic. Yeah, even Lippi said this, man. The Asian Ibrahimovic. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that he said this, but that... He said this in for Chinese news newspaper, and then boom, it goes in Korea. Like ah, oh, Lippi said this, Lippi said that. Ah, uh, they were lucky that year, generally. Yeah. So just sorry, just about FC Seoul. Um, when okay. you when you left Suwon Bluewings, was there any hope or a chance of going back to Seoul? Did Cheong Su want you back there? Well, when I signed for Suwon for Suwon Samsung, the I had option one plus one, but after first yeah. year. 27 goals in the season. Normally, they will like they will they will activate uh, option for mm-hmm. next. To be clear, it was really hard to even think about this. I in that time really everything was perfect for me in Suwon. Yeah. I, I was living in the same neighborhood and uh, where I was living uh, when I was in Seoul. So everything was perfect. Life, uh, football. I was in K League playing ACL on the highest level. So everything was perfect. Next year was really hard, but after the second year, I was. Uh, Cheung Su was in Seoul, so I was thinking maybe we can have some, you know, meeting to see yeah. what thing because uh, Seoul was a good squad. Maybe not. Maybe I'm sure that they they need quality striker. Even now I'm thinking this, but so I was thinking maybe I, he can use me one year. But he decided not to go with that. And even this I understand. Even I like him like my father. I can understand this. In that moment he was thinking I'm not the best option for him. And the end, this is professional life. On the side, when we finish the training, we can always go out together and have dinner. But on the on the pitch, he made decision uh, not to sign me, and then I went to Degu. But I didn't have any like official. Let's let's do something. That was just like speaking friendly, something like this. And he didn't go this way, and that's okay. You I mentioned see. all all four of your K League clubs, and um, if I know you've got scored plenty of goals in the K League. This might be a tough question, but can I ask you your your favorite goal from each club? Favorite goal. I always for Seoul from FC Seoul. Even these goals in ACL, they are the most important. I I remember some goals like uh, against Dejon, 96 minutes for the winning, and uh, we need this win. When we were chasing title, I scored some goal from back, and I don't know how I scored that. Now we got <laughs> know how I scored that. Was that in the in the, the blue and white striped shirt. Yeah, you remember when I? Played? I remember that one. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, was you know small game. Dejon was team who you know was uh, fighting not for relegation. They were like down bottom team. Uh, we need to win to keep the distance from Chombuk. I, I if I remember well. And man, we were losing. And uh, something. And last 95 minutes, I scored goal for winning. That was really nice. And the not important game. Now when you remember, but that, in that moment when we played this game was really important. ACL goals. Chombuk. Chombuk. When we win up there, I score goal heading when we win this Liga Cup. Now it doesn't exist anymore. This cup, mm. 
uh, super match against Suwon, two goals when we won game, you know. But there are many goals, I, I forget. Sure, many yeah. Goals, but there are some really important goals, now I don't remember, but some games when we need to win, game was really tough and I, I was uh, deciding the game last minute or 85 or something like this. I cannot remember all, but there are a lot of really nice memories from this time. I see. Can I, you know, the um, the goal you scored for Sue and Blueing is on your debut. Does that, because it was a qualifying match, does that not count towards your ACL total? No, it doesn't count. Ah, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, no, it's okay. Don't worry, man. <laughs> it just yeah. I need a couple of weeks to prepare myself, and guys, don't. We're going to have one more interview, I promise you guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I, I can't believe, even in, I know it's, it's a, a bigger tournament now with five groups on each side. I still find it incredible that you managed to avoid every K League team in the huh? group stage. Oh, man, my first comment was even on the internet. I told yeah. you and Ryan, I said, guys, four teams, eight teams, and any of them. So, yeah, it's okay. Maybe it's good, honestly. You know, Korean teams have a lot of respect from everyone here in Asia. You know, when they're asking, uh, hey, do you have some Asia player? Do you have somebody from Korea? So, this like automatic everybody respect korean football and maybe for us it's better not to play against the uh, koreans plus these teams are excellent honestly pohan Daegu, chombo kulsan just well, save them for the knockout rounds that's fine yeah, after. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but now they are saying uh, champions league again they are saying maybe it's gonna be uh, on one place they are now see uh, checking where they're gonna be maybe a couple of groups will be in the same same place. I don't know how they're going to organize this. So if I'm not playing against them, for sure I will see them in hotel. So it's okay. And it's really, really, really strange for me. Every time you know, I'm, I'm having interview here, speaking about Korean fo football, I'm not playing anymore there. And it's, it's going to be really strange if I see some of them, you know, after 14 years, I'm not in K-League. So, yeah, it's everything strange, but, you know, probably time by time I will get used to that. Yeah, but the ACL, I think, must be just a bonus for you because it, it's, it's not... It's not just about ACL. I'm, I'm sure you're going to play for a good club there who win titles. And like yeah. you said earlier, another, another medal to add to your collection. Yeah, why not? Why not? This team is really good. The organization is perfect. Facilities for City. I don't need to speak about Hong Kong generally. Everything is okay. And the most important guys here is no winter. You know, everybody knows that I'm summer boy and I hate winter. I hate when it's cold. Here is hot almost all year. Yeah, today is 2021, 20, 22, sunny day. Uh, see, so everything is perfect. It looks like I can do really good here. Oh, yeah, and it's it snowed in Korea this morning. It was snowing in Korea. Yeah, I saw. It. I'm telling you guys, it's snowing in Korea. I woke up here, you know, put the you know these curtains up. Tiny day. I can show you later after the interview. I will show you the view. Unbelievable. So even this, it's maybe not important, but for me, it's very important when it's you know really warm, hot, uh, sunny day. I like that. So even weather is good here. Team facilities I still didn't see. I was playing against Kichi in tournament 2016 or 17 here in Hong Kong. So I was there on training camp. Unbelievable. Grounds, everything. They are much, much better than everybody else here. The biggest team, the biggest, uh, I say, sponsors here. So everything is perfect. I hope so we can do well in ACL and just, how to say, attract more sponsors here in Hong Kong to come and uh, support this football more. Because the uh, city is really good, man. Yeah, well, hopefully you can get another, a medal to add to your collection, score lots of goals, and um, we'll see Ex what happens, yeah. <laughs> Expand one more year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, man. I want to I wanna just go well, man. They are expecting a lot from me. They are bringing me like marquee player. <clears throat> somebody who needs to, to, to do well, to push the team, to, to give, uh, how say, to be a role model on the pitch, outside of the pitch. So I came not only to play football because I had a lot of, I have a lot of respect here in Asia generally because of K-League and because of teams and how I play with K-League teams in Asia. So I came here to represent even in Korean football to show what what K-League and Korean football means to all Asia. So I, I'm preparing really well, physically and mentally because yeah. it's totally different football style and everything and expectation. And, level i need to be maximum ready physically and mentally if i work on well yeah you mentioned there about being a, a role model and stuff for like young players have you noticed a difference in how young players behave or act in the time that you've been playing is there a different mentality now you know how first uh, in, even we are speaking about this 
you must have respect from them. You are foreigner. We are foreigners. I'm here a long time. I did unbelievable. Okay, blah, blah, blah. But they need to respect you. When they respect you, they, they, then you can see some difference. For me, it's more than enough. When I, when I sign for Kichi, some players from Suwon text me, young players, young players from Daegu, thank you for everything. I didn't, I, I, I never have with them a, a relationship like uh, daily speaking or uh, going coffee together because they were much younger than me. You know, this uh, Korean, you know, they were literally just distance because I'm young. Yeah, yeah. You know how this goes. Yeah. I was never like this, really connected with them like uh, closely. But... Mm -hmm. Meaning, I was different with them. Just speaking, just give them advice, yelling if, if I need to yell on them, supporting if uh, they have some problem or they you see head down, they are not playing or coach is saying something to them. You know how this goes in Korea. They are sending me messages. Uh, thank you for everything. They didn't know that. They didn't. They didn't need to do that. But everybody sending messages. I'm. I'm. My favorite player, Kenny, is performing really good. And I was telling a long time ago that this guy need to play in Suwon and I'm happy that he's finishing. He finished this army and now he will be the top player in Suwon Samsung. I was texting with him. It's really nice to see that. Even we play just six months together. Him every day after training, staying, shooting together, keeping goalkeepers to stay with us. So these kind of things, even in Daegu, we did many times after training, we always stay to you know, have a, like extra shooting. I always keep young players. So I'm doing this because I think it's good for them. It's good for me, but I don't need to call them to be with me. I can leave just two players on the side and go keep it and to do guys for myself. So I'm always pushing young players to have some extra training, not only physical, not only gym, not only running, to do some extra work on, 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 on their foot, shooting, looking the goalkeeper, reaction. So I hope so. This football, like on the pitch, I can help them like this. Everything else, they need to, you know, check how we are treating them. If we are always supporting them, that means they are doing well, they are, they are performing well, they are behaving well. If we are yelling too much on them, they need to change. They need to be smart to think, man, why he's yelling on me every day? It's not he doesn't like me. It's just I'm not doing how we need to do. So I'm trying to be, you know, in best in you know every in every aspect of football. I'm trying to be positive and try to support them. So let's see. Time will show if I was right about some players and if I if I did well with them. Will I hope so in a couple next couple of years will be national team players. I hope so because I I think they are unbelievable. Yeah, sure. Well, um, you got you got your family there, so I'll, I won't take up too much more of your time. So thank you very much for for talking to us. Good luck this season, and I'm I'm sure we'll speak again soon. Yes, of course, guys. Really nice to speak and catch up after a couple of months. Take care there, guys. Take care, and I hope so we can we can uh, see each other. All right, we'll end that end broadcast.